What's going on everyone? I am out of the studio today to talk about this lens mounted to the Hasselblad X2D. It is from Zhongyi Optics or ZOI Optics. It is the Mitagon 65mm f1.4 for the XCD mount. Now they recently had one for the GFX mount. They have just announced this lens and I've been testing it for the past couple weeks. I gotta say I'm very impressed with what ZOI Optics has done with this because normally when you get adapted lenses, for the most part they are full frame lenses that are just converted and then they just put on whatever mount they want to. I did ask at ZY Optics this, they said no, this was developed for medium format, first the GFX, and now for the Hasselblad X series of cameras. And I gotta tell you, it performs really, really well. Now this is a 65 millimeter lens, which comes roughly around 50 millimeters for full frame conversion. So you're going to get a very thin, shallow depth of field to this, which is very beautiful to see. And it has nine rounded aperture blades and it's got a really nice, pleasant bokeh to it. But of course, when you're manually focusing this, because you have to, it is not autofocus. It is, uh, you have to be very finite with it. Otherwise, you're going to miss focus. At 1.4, it almost kind of gives you a bit of a vintage vibe to it, which is kind of unique. It's almost got a Jekyll and Hyde kind of image quality to it. 1.4 gives you a nice, interesting bokeh, interesting rendering, and then F2 beyond that will kind of give you more of that medium format look that you're used to seeing on other XCD uh, lenses from Hasselblad. Now, in terms of design, this looks really good. It's all metal construction. It feels really robust in the hands. It's 1,050 grams, so it is gonna be heavier on the camera system. But I love the orange markings that they put on this that kind of highlight or complement the Hasselblad orange and black. Um, now, in terms of the aperture ring, it is a non-clicked aperture. It's from 1.4 to f16. Now, there is enough tension there, so you're not going to automatically push it out of 1.4 if you want to keep it at 1.4, but I wish it was uh, clicked. But I guess because with the GFX system, you can shoot video on that. So I'm guessing they're like saying, look, we'll just keep it the same, but it's not a deal breaker. Now there is no lens hood that comes with this as of right now. So the front element is a little bit recessed, but it would have been nice if they actually had a little bit of a lens hood. In terms of flaring, I don't see a lot coming into play, but we'll talk about that in Lightroom in just a second. But overall, I have to say, I have to give them credit for the price point of this lens. It feels really good on the X2D. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into Lightroom. We're going to pixel peep. We're going to take a look at images with the X2D and we're going to come back with my final thoughts. All right, let's take a look at some images here from Lightroom. Let's start with portraiture. Here's a shot of my friend Alan that I was taking with, uh, he was, we were doing some motorcycle shots of him. Now let's zoom in on this a bit. I did miss focus on the eye, unfortunately, and that's one of the uh, challenges with this lens with the X2D at this time because there is no focus peaking. When there's focus peaking, or if that does come in the near future, that will definitely help with a very wide open lens like this. But uh, just to give you an idea of how it looks, here's after edit, of course. And if you look down here, the sideburn is more in focus and sharper, and it does a decent job. It's not the sharpest lens out there. It has more of a vintage render to it, which I like. I kind of like that vibe to it. It's something different from the native XCD lenses, which are super sharp, super modern rendering, which are fantastic for product, for commercial work. But if you want something a little bit different, this lens may be something you want to have in your back. Here's another photo of Alan as well, just to give you an idea of, again, portraiture. Did miss the eye a little bit here as well, but to give you an overall look at the image and how it renders and the background. Now let's look at something a little bit more stopped down here. And this is around f5.6, f8 thereabouts, because there's no aperture reading uh, inside the camera. But uh, again, this is much more of a modern render that we're used to seeing from medium format lenses. So this works relatively well. Is it as sharp? as the XCD lenses? No, it's not, but it's decent. It's okay. And it does the job. Pretty happy with it, especially for the price point. And here's another shot of Alan on the R9T. Great looking bike, by the way. Let's look at this image here where we have an item that is really going to give you an idea of how the bokeh renders, especially with the background. This is of a um, sort of an ornament or charm that it was at a Chinese temple. And as we can see in the background, looking at the bokeh here, it's more of an oblong shape. I don't see really any sort of green halos coming out, which is nice. But it's a little bit busier. You can see what the texture is right here, which is nice. Again, it complements what I'm seeing in focus and what I'm seeing out of focus, at least for me personally, and very happy with that. Then here's an example of where we go from 1.4, as I mentioned earlier, kind of a Jekyll and Hyde look. And then we go stop down and you can see this sharpens right up a lot of detail right here in this area. You can see the details on the rope right here. Everything is tack sharp. Very, very happy with it. So if you're worried about this being a one trick pony lens, it is not. You definitely can. I maximize this lens. Another shot. This is more stopped down about, I believe about 5.6 thereabouts. And again, you can see the textures on the wall, on the signage here. Everything is really sharp and in focus and very happy with it. And now to my final thoughts. So as we saw from the images there, this is impressive, especially for the price point around 599 US dollars. Now that is subject to change depending on 
you know, the price point that they come out with because I'm recording this video in advance. But that's what the GFX mount is priced roughly. And you're getting a 65 millimeter F1.4, which is gonna give you a beautiful bokeh, something interesting, something more creative than what's out there from Hasselblad currently. Again, it's manual focus. You're reliant on the electronic shutter in this case, which means you need to shoot still subjects, portraiture, landscape, or anything that's not moving. Anything that's going to move, you're gonna get some warping because unfortunately, the X series of cameras does not have a mechanical shutter unlike the GFX cameras, which has a mechanical shutter. So you can be more versatile with adapting lenses. This, you're going to be limited on what you can shoot. But if that's the kind of photographer you are, then I think you're gonna really enjoy what this lens has to offer. Again, price point, build quality, optics, it's not a bad option out there. So big thanks to ZY Optics for allowing me to test drive this. I'm not paid or sponsored for this video. These are my thoughts and my thoughts only. This lens goes right back to them after this, but I'm glad to test it out here. And I'm waiting for the new XCD lenses to come out so I can give you a video on that. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel. Helps me out a lot. Take care, stay safe, and I'll chat to you soon.